If you're a longtime listener to Robin Hood Radio, you've heard a lot about things that come out of Norfolk. Uh, one of them uh, every summer is the Yale uh, music uh, program, which goes on uh, in Norfolk. Well, I just learned that in the 70 some years they've been around, there's also been a school of art. And uh, this year, uh, we have the co directors of the Norfolk School of Art, uh, Lisa Siegel and Byron Kim, with us. Lisa and Byron, uh, thanks for joining us. It's our pleasure. For having us. All right, who wants to take the question? How come it took me 70 years to find out that there was a school of art? Well, I'll take mm-hmm. it. Part of it is yep. the nature of visual art versus uh, versus music. I mean, music by its very nature is performative, so it, it's a no-brainer to have um, performances that uh, engage the community. Um, in visual art these days, there can be performance aspects, but um, historically, it hasn't it hasn't been uh, mostly performative. So, um, you know, the stereotype of a, of a visual artist is someone who's in their studio kind of working away. It's not something that people, in fact, uh, if people came in and, and uh, if a group of people came in and watched me working in my studio, I wouldn't be able to work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, that, that's, a, that's the beginning of the way to explain it. All right, so now let's get a little bit back background on both of you. You've both been uh, named uh, uh, co-directors. Uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa, a little bit of background uh, about you and, and how you got into art and where you are right now. Uh, let's see, I grew up in Philadelphia, and I guess since I was very young, I was always the, quote, artist um, and made artwork. So I guess it was a kind of natural path for me. And... Um, Byron and I met at a place called Skowhegan School of Art, which is a residency for artists in Maine, which I think we could kind of circle back to because it kind of shaped the two of us and has given us, um, I mean, it's in, in some part a reason why we're, we became co-directors this summer of Yale Norfolk. But I went to, um, uh, I don't know, trained as a painter um, in Philadelphia at at Tyler Temple School of Art, and then in Rome, and then went to Yale Graduate School uh, for for painting as well. So, and now we we both have studios in Brooklyn, and um, I also curate at the Drawing Center an artist program called Open Sessions. So, all right, and Byron, what about you? Your your path to Norfolk. <laughs> um, let's see. It's a little bit different. Um, I decided to become an artist as an adult. Um, I went to Yale also, but for undergraduate, um, and did not major in art. Um, I pretty much decided to become an artist at Skowhegan, the place that Lisa just mentioned, which is a little bit like Norfolk. Um, except it's open to all ages. Um, um, when I say Norfolk, of course I mean Norfolk, Yale Norfolk School yeah. of Art. Um, and, um, yeah, Lisa and I are married. and we Now, now you know, around here, we're, we're used to summer residency programs. Uh, like in classical music, you have Music Mountain that has a summer residency program. Uh, Yale has, uh, yeah, pardon me, Hotchkiss has, uh, once again, in music and, and other things. What I think is interesting in here is you really plan to open this up, publicize it to people. You've got a series of lectures and more coming up, The Ethics of Color. Uh, who wants to, to take off on The Ethics of Color? Uh, well, um, I guess I will. And uh, we were very interested in changing um, – the identity, perhaps, of the School of Art, because we have been uh, much more um, private in some ways, as as we described, because of the nature of the visual art practice, um, but thought that it would be interesting to um, open up and create a kind of discourse around a theme that would both, would, so that we invited um, five different speakers who will approach the, the topic of the ethics of color 
um, from very different um, points of view, and then use their their lectures, the content of their lectures, to create curriculum and uh, responsive kind of courses for the um, students, the young artists who will be attending the program. So we're thinking, hope, we're hoping that it'll become uh, a very rich dialogue that, that the, the community at large can share, um, perhaps with the um, the students even, uh, and you know have a, have a real conversation going. Oh, I think um, go, uh, we go, don't go on we right. don't want to be misleading um, the the. The art endeavor still remains fairly private, yep. um, so the studios aren't open to the public, just as practice rooms wouldn't be. Absolutely, yeah. I guess I was trying to say through. that there'll be um, occasions, like right after the lectures, for receptions, and it might be an opportunity for you know people to to uh, just to you know talk and think about some of the issues um, between the students and perhaps you know the people who the public. Well, I think it's, but, it's but just it. simply that the that that we've chosen a theme um, makes it easier for the public to engage because over the course of the summer there'll be a, a through line um, of content for people to sort of follow. Um, the, this particular theme, the ethics of color, was purposely pur- maybe purposely a little vague. Um, and we chose five speakers who, who some of them might be a little bit related and, and others are very different from each other in their content. And we, we haven't emphasized that they stick to that particular theme. We've chosen them because of our theme, um, but then we're hoping that they'll just speak about what they know best. And... Um, you know, like in a typical kind of lecture format, there'll be a, a question and answer at the end for the public to engage. We're talking right now with Lisa Siegel and Byron Kim, uh, co-directors of the uh, Yale Norfolk School of Art. There is a series of lectures coming up on the ethics of color uh, on May 23rd, the 30th, June 7th and 13th and 20th. The lectures are all being held at 7 o'clock at the Yale Norfolk School of Art, uh, the Battelle House. A reception follows each. It's free and open to the public. Uh, you know, what, what's great about this is it does, uh, it brings uh, to Norfolk and the area another chance for people uh, to come in. You're going to explore an art subject of the uh, color, but afterwards, I think it's so important to have uh, the give and take between. Uh, between the people who are going to be giving the presentations and the people of the community that I think it really does open up a little bit more an understanding of what goes on. And also, I think it probably will help publicize you for more of these in in the summers to come. That's what we're hoping hoping for. (laughs) Yeah, we've been trying, we've been batting around um, what the theme would be for 2020. You know, I think people don't realize, uh, I, and what I've begun to realize in my 66 years uh, of, of talking with artists of all different types, whether it's uh, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's sculpture, whether it's photography, whether it's painting, is that I think all artists like that uh, are in the moment, but even though you're in the moment, that being in the moment of creating and bringing something to life and fruition – also includes that moment, planning out ahead into the future what you're going to do. Do 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 both of you have have, have trouble, or or have you gotten together to mix that together? That you're in the moment for right now, but also realizing that your creative skills don't just end with what you're working on at the moment. Um, hmm. Yeah, I completely identify with what you were saying. Although, although I thought you were going to say something different at the end of it, I thought you were going to say. Um, you're in the moment, but then eventually you have to think about how what you're working on reaches an audience, which is a little bit related to what you were saying. Yeah, it, that's, um, an off, that's an offshoot of what I'm saying, but I, I just find it, uh, it's, there's, I think there's something always going on in those brains of yours 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Lisa, do you want to respond to that? I mean, you, we've both been working so long in our studios and, um, are so um, 
so grateful to be able to try to, um, you know, kind of give our experience to uh, these young artists who will be who will be joining us this summer. They're tw- they're going to be twenty six. There are wow. there are always twenty six of them, and they're always rising seniors in college. And they're, and they're from all over. And they're in the resident. And they're in residence at at this at the school in Norfolk. Well, they're in residence in terms of having studios there, but the tradition for the both the music school and the art school has been that they actually uh, live with people in the community, which is kind of an interesting. Well, I think that of. that that's great. I think that even helps uh, inter- intertwine people even more uh, uh, to the to these lectures. So now 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 the the lectures once again are are May twenty third, May thirtieth, June seventh. June thirteenth and June twentieth, uh, once again seven o'clock, uh, Norfolk School of Art, uh, Patel House. Receptions follow. It's free and open uh, to the public. Uh, I think this. What's great about this is I think it's also beneficial uh, to the music program, and it just shows uh, how significant a commitment that Yale has uh, to this piece of property up here in Norfolk. And once again, it shows how lucky we are. To live in an area that has so much incredible uh, talent uh, that is exposed to, to residents, what do you both feel about 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 that and Yale being in this area? Well, I guess um, this will be our first summer um, spending time in the area, um, and we're pretty excited about the possibilities of some kind of um, collaboration between our our young the young artists and um, perhaps the the composers, we don't have much of an overlap with the music school, um, maybe just the last week, but because lots of um, artists are becoming more performative and you know, there's not, not many artists are medium-centric any longer, so we thought that it would be interesting in the future, probably not this summer in particular, to really think about you know what those um, overlaps can be. So, you know, just talking and thinking about exciting possibilities for um, ways to really kind of connect the, the different kinds of arts and then with the community should be um, interesting as we move forward. Are you, Do you guys, I know I know on Instagram, uh, I, I see your posters all the time uh, and I see your posts all the time. Do you have a Facebook presence a, a, as well? Uh, not uh, really, I don't. Okay. Uh, are you talking about that, the, the program? Uh, yeah, about the program itself. Yeah, because because I I saw your postings on on Instagram. Uh, I, I think that yes, we do have a Facebook presence as well. Uh, I just because I think that the more you put out, this is just such a ripe area, especially in the summertime, uh, for arts and like I said, all form of arts. And there there hasn't been a program like this offered, uh, a lecture series like this, um, on a particular theme. Uh, yeah, some of the some of the some of the various uh, uh, galleries around here uh, have have lectures with individual artists, but uh, what I think what you've done is taken a theme, the ethics of color, uh, and and put it out there. And with all these different lectures, uh, there's a multitude of different ways these lectures and and the questions that that are going to come up can go. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, that's exactly what we were thinking. And and frankly, since it's our first summer, we have um, we have no idea what what kind of response there's going to be and um, what kind of possibilities are out there. Um, as you said, we've heard that there's a lot of um, tradition going pretty far back uh, with regard to um, music audiences. Um, but uh, this this program's pretty been been pretty low key. Um, Sam Messer, who we took over from, has done a great job. And, and for the most part, there have been public lectures um, every summer, but for the most part, they've been the kind that you just described. Uh, um, artists who give talks about their work, which is, which is great. Um, which is, it's great, but, but maybe a little harder to, to get an audience to, to, to keep coming, you know, one lecture after the next. Well, yeah, be, 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 yeah, because you're you're exposing people not only to the artist's interpretation of the ethics of color, but also their own. That's the great thing about visual art, is that it it's presented one way, and everybody interprets their it, it their own way. 
Absolutely. R- yeah. Right. And also there's the opportunity for us to not limit it to visual art. For the most part, these lectures will be related to visual art, but... Um, but one of them by Tavia Nyong'o uh, is going to be about the color brown, and I'm, frankly, I'm not sure that he's going to talk. He knows a lot about contemporary art, yeah. but I'm not sure that he, he'll he'll talk mostly about visual art. I'm pretty sure he's going to talk about the color brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I know. That's a pretty. I think all these lectures uh, are exactly like that. They're going to they're going to start off one place, and obviously wind up. I, I like most lectures do like this, uh, going into a completely different place. Uh, once again, I want I want to mention this: the Yale Norfolk School of Art uh, having the Ethics of Color thematic program with lectures uh, this summer. Uh, the dates are May twenty third and thirtieth, June seventh and thirteenth, and twentieth. Uh, 7 p.m. for all the lectures at the Yale Norfolk School of Art, Hill House. Uh, receptions will follow, and this is once again where we're so lucky about in our area, free and open to the public. Well, uh, I want to welcome both you, uh, Byron and Lisa, uh, to our northwest corner of Connecticut. We hope you enjoyed the summer here, and uh, I'll tell you what: we'll sh- we should check in probably about halfway through and and uh, redo this interview and just see how how the lecture series uh, is coming along. That would be wonderful. Thanks so Thank much. you so much for talking Thanks to us so this much. morning. Take care.